follow-up to the video I made about the hand pump rocket engine. Today's video is about how to make an electric jet engine, which is essentially replacing the awful hand pumped mechanism in the previous design with a smooth electric jet. For this project, I'm going to be using the EDF that I showed in my Arduino video. But I can't just stick the EDF onto the engine. No, I have to make a joining section so that the air flows continuously from the EDF to where the gas is supplied. Because if there's any leakage or anything, th this whole thing probably won't work. To make this tight pressure seal, I can't think of anything better than to use a water bottle that I've mangled and mutilated in many previous projects. Let's get making. Wow, this looks tough. I think it's going to require all of my engineering expertise. Whilst my face seems fairly expressionless here, I was actually in excruciating pain because I just burnt my finger on hot glue. Being the great engineer that I am, the only way to safely secure the motor to this mount is with duct tape. Whilst doing some tests, I realise that the motor heats up really quickly when it's contained in this bottle because the pressure builds up and the heat from the motor has nowhere to go. It goes into the air which gets hotter and then that just comes back and it's a whole big issue. So my solution to this problem is to put a cool pack on the air intake. I mean this shouldn't be too bad. What, what can go wrong with putting a wet cool pack in front of the motor? This design didn't work, but I don't really know why. I mean, I think it's probably because the air is pushing too fast, it's blowing the gas and the flame out so it can't ignite, um, but I don't really know. On the back of this failure, it's time to move onwards and upwards to an even harder design. So I'm going to use tin cans to make the body of this jet engine. Uh, this should be good because obviously these cans are made out of steel, not tin, and uh, they they should be able to hold the heat pretty well. The problem is, I only have garden tools to cut them with. But first, I need to undo all the work I did previously, and that's best done with a scalpel. A screwdriver and hammer work well to make holes in the tin can.
shears actually worked surprisingly well. Let's have a look at how this works. Or doesn't work in this case. The reason why this didn't work is exactly why a real jet engine does work. A real jet engine has a compressor section in it, so as the air comes in, it gets compressed and actually slows down to increase the pressure. Whereas when I'm using a fan, the air is just coming in and it's just getting accelerated, it's going faster, and this fast air means that it's going to blow out any flame that I try and use to ignite the gas. If you look at the bottle here, it's kind of smoked out. This is because I did a test fire to check that the igniter was working, but then it backfired and went through the uh, motor instead. See, this has got me thinking. Maybe my original design wasn't so bad. Maybe all I needed to do was increase the size of the bottle that the air goes into before it reacts with the gas. Because maybe I just need to create a region where there's a slightly lower pressure, so there's less oxygen flowing that's more controllable. This design clearly needs some improvement to make it more stable. In all the designs up to this, I've been using a potentiometer to control the EDF speed, but maybe that's not the way to go, because trying to hold the potentiometer steady at a certain speed is really hard, and this is what's causing all these instabilities in my flames. How about a magic trick? Yep, I've switched to RC. I think it has to be said, flames look a lot cooler in slow-mo.
spinal design works really well, and I'm really happy with it. See you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.